Well, let's have a large attended funeral of the Atlanta Negro Business League in final tribute of the life it lived in years gone by. It took a crisis to create the Atlanta Business League as we know it today. The economic depression of the 1930s forced National Negro Business League headquarters to stop holding conferences for three years. That left local affiliates with no support and local business owners screaming for a change from the status quo. If the Business League had not died before this depression came in upon us, there are many things it would have done in the manner of organizing Negroes and stimulating collective commercial action. The Atlanta Color Business League had started moving away from the NNBL corporate structure. Visionary leadership transitioned the organization into an advocacy group designed to help black people find jobs and black companies get work. We have work to do. I'm sorry to keep you all waiting. We just need to talk about the... If you are looking for a hardworking, we educated workers... We don't need no educated workers. Listen, we can't hire Negro workers here. We ain't got any white and colored bathrooms. In the 1930s, the Atlanta Business League changed tactics, leadership, and its name. It reorganized as the Atlanta Negro Chamber of Commerce and began to change policy at the local and national level. So there needs to be a voice, and we're that voice. Jesse Blayton helmed the league, ran a business, opened a radio station, taught classes at Atlanta University, and was elected to be a National Negro Business League officer. His influence made the local league the umbrella organization for other black businesses. Blayton also started inclusionary policies that have remained in effect for the last 80 years. As a child growing up, if there's one thing that I took away from life, you know, beyond uh, really being troubled at the lack of access, was the fact that we could overcome, that we are not second class to anybody, and that when we come together and work together, uh, there's no end to what we can do. And I think, frankly, there's a great bit of that spirit that, that I see in the in Atlanta Business League because it is the coming together of people. Future banking executive Milton Jones played on Auburn Avenue in the 1950s when business was booming and spilling onto Hunter Street, now Martin Luther King Jr. Drive. The Atlanta Business League of the era responded to that growth by evolving again. Most notably, women such as Ruby Blackburn were involved with leadership positions and black businesses made progress by selling their goods and services outside the black community. The Atlanta Negro Chamber of Commerce faded away, and the next generation of leaders merged with the Atlanta Business and Trade Association to reclaim the Atlanta Business League name. Many black businesses remained agrarian-based, and African-American farmers ruled the very lucrative green grocer market into the 1960s. The civil rights movement then saw ABL leaders such as Jesse Hill take on an administrative role to help marchers and protesters achieve their goals of equality and justice. But the league also accomplished something else. It helped recommend and usher qualified blacks into corporate positions. Then, as now, the ABL had friends in high places around Atlanta. Former Atlanta mayor Sam Marcel says, there's one reason that negotiations between black and white business leaders of the time avoided the riots and destruction that tore other cities apart. This, uh, you know, black and white together, mixed, come out green. You know, you can't overlook the fact that uh, negotiations of the civil rights reforms uh, where whites and blacks, uh, the leadership of both communities, sat together. The blacks uh, were wearing Phi Beta Kappa keys just as shiny as those gold keys from the whites. And uh, they were as well-traveled, as well-read. And uh, coming from the Atlanta uh, University Center, uh, we were very fortunate to, to have a, a black leadership that the white leadership felt more comfortable with because it was so equal in so many ways. That equality spawned a level of business innovation that has brought billions of dollars into Atlanta's economy and has largely gone unrecognized by business historians. In the mid-1980s, Atlanta Business League supporter Andrew Young was in his second and last term as mayor when Atlanta Business League leaders asked him to lead a trade mission to Jamaica, Trinidad, and Barbados. And that is a great picture. I would love to have that. We organized 70 black florists around the Southeast 
Alice Bussey changed the import-export of flowers in the nation. And the thing about it is, the flowers that come into the United States come from Africa. And they go to Holland, and then they come here, and then they're distributed across the South. Whereas we were getting flowers directly from the Caribbean right straight to Atlanta. And so instead of flowers lasting you one week, these uh, tropical flowers would last a month. Former Atlanta Mayor Young also says the direct air route from Jamaica to Atlanta was established during the Atlanta Business League mission in the mid-1980s. We saw business opportunities there that they had not seen themselves. Everybody got something out of that trade mission. And uh, it was really, for me, one of the finest hours of the Atlanta Business League. In the 20 years Leona Bar Davenport has been president and CEO, the organization has added a third focus to its mission of mentoring and educating black business owners and executives. And what we do, we try to garner information, we garner uh, databases and names of business owners and, and, and businesses and agencies that can help business owners to grow. And so we utilize that to feed it back out to our members and to the community. Information is power. The effective use of information combined with a long-term corporate partnership and technical sophistication helped the ABL pay off a $350,000 mortgage in less than two hours in 2012. We're extremely proud of our partnership with Delta Airlines. They issued a challenge to the Atlanta Business League and they said, if you can raise $125,000, we will match it two to one to help retire the debt on your building. And they wanted to give us six months or more to do it. And our chair, Thomas W. Dort said, I got a better idea. Why don't we do it in one lunch? Yeah, that was a, that's a good memory there. Um, so my pleasure. Um, that's a software that came out of a brainstorming at a board meeting one day. Um, we were trying to think through ways to engage the ABL constituents to raise funds. Uh, left the meeting, went back to the office and talked to my staff and came up with a, a pretty cool concept. Um, in the end, as you mentioned, a lot of money was raised from there. Um, pretty exhilarating moment. Um, from that point, what's interesting about that is that given all the accolades and the success of that event, we've actually decided to make that a product, um, which is actually going to market now. Um, there are a few corporations that are looking to white label it in, in the market. So it's a pretty interesting story there. The entire history of the Atlanta Business League is an interesting story. It's also longer than most people realized until now. Booker T. Washington started the National Negro Business League in 1900. And from the very beginning, an Atlanta chapter existed with Atlanta Life founder Alonzo Herndon as one of the delegates to the first meeting. It at first operated under the name of the Atlanta Colored Business League. And this man, high school principal William B. Matthews, was chapter president. For 113 years, under various names and different addresses, there's always been a black business league in Atlanta. 1933 became pivotal for the organization because it became like its members, self-reliant in the face of bleak financial prospects. I keep working and washing and washing and working. I know there's something more. There has to be something more. Maybe not for me, but for somebody like me, the future has to be brighter. The future has to be better. Somebody gonna appreciate what I did. Some way, somehow. Members who formed the backbone of the ABL 80 years ago would be awestruck by the people who lead and participate in the organization in 2013. Uh, if, if I were to reflect on the Atlanta Business League and where we are now, and, and I ran into someone from the 30s who would ask, well, what are you doing? Uh, I would say we're making a difference in today, and we're living your dream. Happy anniversary, Atlanta Business League. May you have many more.